Hello everyone, my name is Sai and welcome to another episode of Sai San Studio. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to make a naturalistic artwork like this. This was my entry into the 2020 Toronto Flower Show and um, I'm going to teach you how to make one. Every competition has rules and the rules for this one was to create a naturalistic picture using dried, dyed, pressed, treated or plant-based material. Essentially a collage of plant stuff. And these were the entries for that class and they were stunning. While most people chose to depict the landscape, I decided to go another route and I focused on the birds. Oh, here's my work. Sometimes in a competition, having a different outlook can set you apart. And in this case, it really helped me. But my true inspiration came from my friend Carol Gian Grande. You can see her second person in this picture, who is an avid birder. When I was thinking of Birder's Paradise, I thought, what would be a paradise for my friend who travels all over and takes stunning pictures of birds? And that's how I knew the focus had to be on the birds. And you know what? What better way to show paradise than with lots of birds? So I started researching and looking for birds that would be suitable. And chickadees seemed to be the perfect fit. I could get the colors they were adorable and if I could make an arrangement with at least three it would convey the message so that's what I did I combined some pictures and came up with a composition in the end I changed the placement of the birds but now I'm gonna guide you step by step through the process of making this artwork let's get started the supplies you need for this project are a one-to-one -one scale picture of the bird, tracing paper, a fine liner, as well as colored pencils. You're going to be using scissors and an X-Acto to cut, tweezers to place material, and a brush to clean things off. Double-sided tape, a glue gun, wood glue, and clear glue. Now in this section I'm going to talk about the material I use and how I prepare it in advance. And these include cinnamon, red dates, pine needles, cardboard, cotton sheets, globe thistle seeds, northern sea oat leaves, twine, crabapple branches, sunflower seeds, and a single blackberry lily seed for the eye. Let's take a look at them. The first one I'm going to start with is cinnamon. And this is a cinnamon I found at a Chinese grocery store. It's very different from what we're used to seeing it's in bark form and I thought it would be a perfect texture and uh, easily shapeable for the branch section. The fruit was actually red dates that I found at the same grocery store and all I had to do was shape them into the shape of a berry but beautiful texture and color. Now for the bird itself I had to start off with a piece of cardboard to form the body and on top of that I put different sheets of cotton and this is a cotton that I use for chalk pastels so it's an art supply and you can cut it and shape the body to give it that rounded form. And probably the most important part were these globe thistle seeds which are one of my favorite plants in the garden loved by bees and um, I took the seeds themselves and I separated them into two parts the shorter hairs and the longer spikier stuff and I managed to save the seed as well so by bleaching the top section I made it white and tinting the bottom section with ink made it black so I separated a ton of seeds into different sections I combined one part bleach to two parts water and I soaked the seeds for about two hours and this bleached them. 
For the short stubbier sections, I put watercolor ink, mixed it in, and I left it for about four hours. And the part that was common for both, I washed them, let them dry, and ironed them to flatten them into manageable shapes. I wanted to get the roundness of my bird from the understructure. And another critical part was northern sea oat leaves. Now I had a stack of this at home and when I was looking for material it had the right color but it was very you know bumpy and three-dimensional so I decided to flatten it out. Soaked it for about three hours and then I tried to iron it and to my delight it was beautiful. And the last part of the main body of the bird is the jute. And this is, I need some short hairs of a specific color. And this is the same twine that you use in gardening. And for somebody who doesn't like ironing, man, I ironed a lot of things for this project. Iron it flat, and there you go. So the crab apple branch I used for the feet, and it's just a branch that I found in my front yard. Sunflower seeds from a bird seed pack that I had. Ooh, the variety. And the last bit of the puzzle was the blackberry lily seed. Now these are beautiful and their seed pods look like blackberries. And I had a couple of seed pods. So I found the perfect black little eye for my bird. Let me start by giving you an overview of the whole process. We're gonna take that picture and we're gonna trace the pattern of the bird onto a sheet of tracing paper. And I'll cut the body out for the cardboard, cover it with cotton, mark out some areas, and start layering material. For the wings, I'm gonna use that same pattern, cut out the individual feathers and assemble them and put them onto the bird. And this is a layering material. You always have to think, you start from the thing that is furthest down and you put it on top of it so you can get that three-dimensional aspect. And we'll have our bird. And last, we're going to frame the whole thing. And that's where the composition comes in. And I'll use cinnamon and my berries and create lovely, lovely artwork. So let's start with the tracing. I'll take my picture and I'll trace out the most important features. And I have to pay special attention to the feathers. If I'm not sure, I'll lift the sheet and take a look underneath. And I'll also make a little outline of the body of the bird that I'm gonna cut out with cardboard. Five millimeters smaller than the actual bird. And I'll take that body and cut it out from that cardboard. You can see where I've cut the other pieces out before. And now I'm gonna layer it with cotton. And I'll take those individual sheets of cotton and I'll cut them to kind of create that rounded form. So I'll have larger sheets. But an important aspect is I've got to know where the eye is because that eye is going to be critical for me to have a little bit of an indentation so the eye doesn't pop out in the final work. So it's kind of set in a little bit. Mark that in and take it out of my cotton layers. And you can see here, I've got that whole three dimensional thing going on. It's kind of like a contour map. And once I have that, I'll glue these layers down together so they don't move. It's kind of a little delicate work. And I'll cover the whole thing with another sheet of cotton to give it that overall look. And working with this cardboard allows you to actually create an even more sense of dimension by being able to put stuff underneath it as well. 
So I'll wrap the cotton around it. And that's my little bird. Next I'll mark out the black areas for the cap and the neck of the chickadee. This is important because when I attach the black parts, it's you might be able to see through. I'll even go around and mark that. Next I'll have to put the globe thistle seeds for the chest. And this part is one that you have to start thinking about layering. And the way you do that is you start by the bits that are underneath it. So you always think of, it's like placing shingles. You want to place each little tuft on top of the other one to cover the seam. And this way it gets a very uniform look. Even on the back. It gives a nice set of, you know, um, dimensionality. For the wings, which have to be placed next, I need to create master patterns. And that is create bunches of wings. And for that, I'll draw a line to where each feather should extend to. And I'm going to go in and draw that feather all the way up to that line. Move the tracing paper, draw the second feather. So this is important because th that line is going to be where all the feathers are going to be attached together. And you can see, here's my master plan. And once I have all those feathers, I'll create a copy. That allows me to use the tracing paper for cutting out the individual leaves. I'll cut out the shapes, use double-sided tape to tape it to the back of the leaves, and then cut it out. You have to make sure that you glue the leaves to the top surface, and um, otherwise it's going to come out in reverse. But that copy of the feather pattern that we made is now perfect because we can place each individual feather on there and keep track of them because trust me, it can get a little crazy. And now I need to start adding detail to the individual feathers. While the base color is there, there are some darker areas as well as the white on the edge of the feathers that you need to capture. So I just use basic color pencils and gently add in that detail. Even try to have little lines to kind of show the feathery aspect of it. And now that I have all the feathers, it's time to assemble. I roll up a piece of masking tape and line it right underneath that line that I use because I know all my feathers are going to go up to that line. So using the pattern, I can place them on top of each other, starting from the one that is furthest back. Now in this particular case, since I didn't have any more exposed masking tape, I'll put another piece of clear tape so I have surface to stick my feathers on. And here you are, a beautiful handy little tail. So I'll open up the masking tape and wrap it around. And so that becomes a little tail assembly that uh, I can place on the bird. Just cut off the extra masking tape and here you have it. Now we're going to start layering material and it's essentially la layering all the different feather assemblies and you can see just from the picture how you can put them on over each other to create that added dimension. So I'll start with the tail then in my bird, it's the left wing. And having a one-to-one -one scale picture and pattern really helps. Now it's the right wing. And then I separated those two little feathers sections into the lower one and an upper one. There you go, starting to look good. Now we need to add the twine. And again, 
I'm just going to take lengths of twine and just press them down and leave them as long as possible because afterwards you can always trim. But you have to start from the layer underneath. Again, it's a whole shingling method. And put them in and cover. And then you can start to gently give it a little bit of a haircut and shape it. But we can do that afterwards. Now when you notice what parts of the bird are going to be exposed, you can add details. And for the beak, ah, oh, I found the perfect sunflower seed. It's the exact shape of that beak. And I just glue it on with hot glue. And the indentation we created, blackberry lily seed goes right in there. Now we come for the face. And again, we'll start from the side that is most covered and layer on these fluffy little sections. Tack them in place and then hold them down with your finger to position them. Tweezer is really essential, otherwise it gets very difficult. And the last bit is the black of the cap. Again, start from the lowest section and cover. And try to find like smaller sections or maybe even cut them up for details around the eyes. Hey, starting to look like a bird. But don't forget about the underside. That's what's gonna give it that sense of dimension. So it doesn't look flat, but looks like three-dimensional. And it's haircut time. So that's where I used my brush. Cut off all those extra things so my bird doesn't look so shaggy. Nicely groomed. And clean it up everywhere. Even the belly. Looks good. So now it's about the final details and adding the frame. Because we're kind of in a pandemic, this is all I had at home. So I took that, shaped my cinnamon till I found the perfect composition and uh, glued it down. To fix the joints between the bits of cinnamon, I used thin walnut partitions. That's from the inside of the walnut. And to add even more texture, I scraped off some lichen from the branches I found outside my house. And of course, you need little claws. And I made that with tiny bits of crabapple branches and sunflower seeds cut to tiny little triangles for the claws. Perfect. Now I can glue down my bird. To create the berries, the existing red dates are too big, so I need to make them smaller but I also need to make them round. So I hollow out the inside. I put some cotton so the glue has somewhere to stick. And while it's, the glue is still hot, I shape it into little round balls. I use little pine needles to add the stalks for attaching the berries to the branches. And I think my work is complete. Let's take a look. Actually, this bird looks better than my original for the entry. I think every time you make a bird, it looks a little bit better. So as I finish this section, I'd like to give a shout out to my dear friend, Carol Jean Grande, who inspired me to create this artwork with her beautiful pictures. Thank you, Carol. Well, my friends, I hope that you had as much fun as I did. This project has been so amazing and I have been so um, happy with the results. It certainly changed the way that I look at dry plant material. And you know this summer I'm going to be collecting a lot of dry plant material in addition to the seeds I usually collect. 
can't wait to see what the theme for next year's show is, and uh, you bet you'll meet it again. If you like this segment, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and click that bell button so you get notifications when I have a new segment. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and until next time, I hope you make beautiful art.